Okay, everyone right to go? Bought a, bought a bottle of the old uh, Devil's Cut Jim Beam Giotto about two, three days ago. I just went and got a drink then. She's already uh, kaput. So, Luke, last episode you were uh, copping a bit of there about the uh, physical appearance there. Uh, bit of a hobo status. What's, what's going on there? Yeah, a few people said that um, you and I was it before and after heroin. <laughs> I think if I had heroin, I, uh, I'd be like, what? Gaunt. Yeah, typical Melbourne was it two days ago, it was 22 degrees, and today's top of about Five. seven. Mm. I can't go get a haircut, so I ended up putting the uh, this old tortured 10-year-old uh, full boost beanie back on. Is that, uh, that shop.fullboost.com.au? <laughs> Everybody right to go? Yeah. Very good. Let have another drink. Is that yes or not? Not yet. Do you remember that number plate weapon on that Tirana that was so offensive? I think no one actually complained about it. Vic Rhodes just decided Someone working at Vic Rhodes got a little bit too woke and said this is just way offensive. No, but the Done. A Sydney barrister has got into a legal battle of his own over the offensive number plate on his bright yellow Lamborghini which reads leg opener. Hey, Jordo, a lot of people I saw didn't understand what the plate meant. He even wrote that. He wrote, because it kind of looks like Lego, Lego. That's how your mm. brain sees it, LGO. And he even said most people would never connect the dots and realize that's what it's saying. If I saw that and realised what it was, I'd just be laughing. Hello, As would hello, everybody. I saw an offensive number plate and I'm offended. I'm going to live in a democracy, but I never want to be offended again. What you're actually saying is that's um, something happening between two consenting adults. Yeah. It's not, like, it's not like, you know, you got the number plate. They would, I reckon there would have been a few of those number plates in the 90s, just about uh, getting gapped and they probably got taken off the road. 100%. Yeah, but isn't that, what are the odds, like, didn't he say in that article that he's actually had sort of taken it further because he's got the means that he can and his background, whereas most other people, what are you going to do? You're not going to spend a fortune taking that to court. The lawyer, his response was tough, shizen. He unapologetically told the Sunday Telegraph. So he should. Why should he apologise for this? Yeah, good on him. Apologise for what? Transport New South Wales gave him 18 days to change his number plate, writing in a letter determined that these plates w could be considered offensive and must be returned. Could be considered offensive. You know the thing, even if they're considered offensive, tough, shizen. Be offended. Exactly. I wonder if someone must have the plates offended. Are they offensive? Yeah, I know. Even he goes, these are meant to be funny, tongue-in-cheek, entertaining. It's exactly what they are, but um, the do-gooders, the curtain twitchers, Always win. I don't think it is the do-gooders. I think it's no, someone it said, working. Said, no, with... I think it said someone someone dobbed it in. Yeah, but that's just what they say. I reckon it's just someone working there sees it for whatever reason goes, oh, 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 I'm offended. He's actually said exactly what you said about how two consenting adults is being offensive at the end of the day. I mean, let's face it. Leg opener, you could have that on a um, BAXR6. Be exactly the same uh, result, wouldn't it? The video that was going around all last week, everywhere, was the 3,000 horsepower nitrous explosion on the dyno. I'm still gonna send it. This big diesel setup was shooting for 3,000 horsepower at the tyres, is that correct? Yeah, I think it made 2920 before that, and I think, I could be wrong, I think on this run where it blew up it made 2960. So it was just how, how, many, how many gas bottles and it was just all in, was it? No, it was pretty... It was pretty interesting, the photos they captured too. Obviously, so someone's just got the hammer down on the shutter, and they're pretty interesting. Turbo's flying everywhere, engine, the head's gone everywhere. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, talk about being the right place at the right time with those photos. It kind of reminds you of the explosions you see on the tractor pulling. Yeah, a few people mentioned this term. I don't know much about diesel mechanics, but um, runaway diesel, where the thing just kind of, uh, I guess it's got its own momentum, and just mechanically, it, it keeps going up. Oh, okay. Like it runs away from you sort of thing and um, yeah, a few people said if you listen to it, that's what it sounded like, but... Anyway, that's... Should have um, got Banks... Surely Banks Power 
would be able to give a full analysis of this. Jordo, did you see this hit piece by top tier news program, A Current Affair in Australia, trying to just uh, give the, what are, what are A Current Affair best of? The stitch up, stitch up jobs where they just turn up at some dude's place or work and just, you know, microphone through the door and just start berating them with questions. And you yeah, and usually- and, uh, and all they want- Ends up in the just, door slamming. They just want sound bites. And and this guy was having none of it. In fact, he, he was just entertaining for 10 minutes, just back and forth. The long and the short of it, he employed some guy to help him out, I think at the panel beaters. He was supposed to work there for a month. And in return, this bloke was gonna paint his van because I don't think he could actually pay this guy money because the guy's on the dole. So then the guy said he didn't do half, it didn't do anything. So he paints half the van, which is um, gold. Look at that idiot driving with only half a colored van. So then a current affair come and try and stitch him up and say, hey, what have you done to this guy's van? We'll play a little bit, but we can't actually play hardly anything because it's just a whole lot of sensor beeps, isn't it? Oh, I, it was funny, a current affair, must, they just must have been going overtime with the sensor beeping. But they were loving it. They, they would have been just, oh, this is gold for them. And it kind of backfired. Most people online were saying, you know what? Will got exactly what? I think people see that and think, you know what? We get screwed over people who don't work well. And a lot, most people were siding with Rob, who's the, uh, the panel beater. Yeah, and then another panel shop took on, said they were taking, I don't know why, they were taking on the job. They were getting massive and backlash I, too. Like, what do they say? Any, any, all news is uh, sort of... <clears throat> no, any publicity is good publicity, but oh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah it was I don't know about that when you read the co comments on that. Screw it. You know, every time, Geordie, I mention car sales in Bench Talk, the next day my inbox is just getting hammered with RX-8. Have you seen this one? Have you seen this one? Like, just full gum tree jobs. I don't, I don't even know how to say this. The Mitsuka Lee Seed. Say that again. Whatever, you, whatever the hell that is. $135,000. If you look closely, I looked at it for a little bit and realized that's an S13. It's an S13 Sylvia so, side profile. And apparently they made quite a few of these in Japan. It's the most absurd looking car. It's got the it's got the um, Sydney spec uh, chromies on it too. I don't think they came out. I don't think it came out with these wheels. Respect all builds. Respect all builds. This thing looks like it's had another meter thrown on the front of the car. It's that long. It actually looks humongous. An S13 is not even, it's a tiny car, realistically. This thing looks long. I think I saw a great comment. It said, to be fair, it's not the worst looking car you see driving around Queensland. It's probably true. But yeah, it's amazing that people, that someone would, let's say, pay that money for that thing. Yeah, there's a lot of oddball, you know, you know, they do short production runs in Japan. There's some really odd stuff, isn't there? at the money spent on this HSV to get it to where it is, then look at a barra and spend a quarter of the money on it and it would flog the HSV. Just gap it. Jordo, this guy is 100% spot on. <laughs> this guy has been taught well. I mean, 2K, we're in the eights. I don't know what you're talking about, Jordo. <laughs> this guy's perfectly within his reason of having that legitimate I just company. want you to compare the build quality of a GDS to quality taxi spec, be it what is this thing? B-A-B-F? What's he written here? Column shift vinyl interior. Isn't this GDS, Luke? How fast does it run? Lane nines? Mid nines? 940, 940s or something? I don't know. Isn't it 100% stock drive train in this car? As in like auto backwards? Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think your barrow is going to be running 940s on a stock trans diff, tail shaft, all that. Now, this is a Mustang, obviously. No, it hasn't been modified like, you know, rear ends and that. It's got a standard IRS rear end. Eight zero in the quarter mile. So give me an update. What did you say, Luke? Not not just a, a stock a stock engine. It's actually unopened. Same same, but different. Apparently, sealed. Un totally sealed. This is the a 2019 GT 10 speed auto. I think it went like a one a one twenty three in the sixty. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Stock rear end. 
It just shows you wow. how how well modern chassis put power to the ground. And how awesome is that engine? Oh, unreal. Anyone who's done a, I've noticed, like, you know, there's a certain spec people build them to. They might spend, you know, whatever they, minimum, not minimum, but they kind of do, like, your main mods to them. And they, they'll make all day long, what, 450 kilowatts of the wheels? In Australia, there's not, there's a few quick ones, but there, I wouldn't say there's, there's way more um, quick HSVs. Are you surprised they haven't kind of taken them up quicker here, or...? At the drags, there's not that many quick ones. I mean, most Ford guys, well, XR6 owners aren't really Ford guys. They're like no. people who bought VL turbos back in the day. They're not really Holden guys. You don't see that many fast Ford V8s, like late model ones. Now, Luke, I think it's the last video you put online. Um, you did this really well, comprehensive video from Danny Engines of big cube Ford V8 in a classic XB Falcon. That video looked like yeah. it would take taken ages to make. I remember how many times you went down to film that. That came up a treat, that video. I'm trying to think. I, it was, this, that video was filmed a while ago, right? And I think it was filmed over the course of about 12 months. Yeah. Yeah, I the video, realize you know, that. It, it, it probably looks like it's filmed in, over the course of a few weeks. It doesn't work like that. Mm. But I, I worked it out when I was editing. I, including when we went, you and I went for a cruise and we filmed it at the end there. I, I filmed that that car and engine 10 times to make that video and then and you got one video exactly and then talk about and then how much longer that would take to edit the video it's only think people realize how much work goes into a video like that well there's also um there's obviously a lot of footage that didn't make that cut mm. but i mean I, I didn't want the video to be that long i mean there's bits of it i wasn't happy with it but it is what it is i mean i think people i think people seem to appreciate you taking the time and making a comprehensive video and I'd like I will do a few more of them they just take mm. a while to make and obviously this COVID stuff hasn't exactly helped that deal uh, there's a few projects I sort of there's about four or five projects I started filming at the start of this year that are sort of in limbo and it is what it is but yeah, yeah. Um, they won't be out for ages but it, I, I, it doesn't bother me I, I don't really uh, I'd actually prefer to do videos like that. They're a lot of work, but I just enjoy I guess it's a bit like building a car rather than just, you know, doing one day's work on it. Well, I don't know about mm. you, but uh, when do you reckon we'll be out of this COVID situation? Uh, Victoria Police are the best people to try and clarify that for you. It's had, I mean, you know, majority of the comments are pretty well received as you'd expect, but there's, al there's always the naysayers. I am a semi-professional race car driver. Marchese was the local dandy idiot who said dart blocks were prone to splitting, lol, no Frank, your tune was off, and an audible detonation killed both blocks in your white falcon. Tart, that's pretty stern words there. I guess it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, sniper from the sidelines anonymously behind a keyboard, isn't it? But you're referring to the, the white XW that we've featured quite a few times, I mean, that's a 50-year-old car. Yeah, obviously it's highly modified, but it's a 50-year-old car on leaf springs that's run, what, 212 miles per hour on 275s. On it's done a lot of passes how's too. It, like, how, many, how many cars in Australia are doing that, seriously? Hmm. And it's done a lot of fast passes. How does that saying go? Always remember, if you ain't first, you're last. California to ban the sale of all gasoline-powered cars by 2035. Did you say? California. The state of California. I don't know what they're bothering this. What? That's 15 years away. Isn't um, isn't the World Cup clock for climate change? Isn't the planet ending in seven now? S seven years, I think. Yeah. Seven yeah, years. So, is it? so, it's so be why are they seven banning? Seven years too late. Shouldn't they be banning gas cars in like two years or, or now? Yeah. Or coming from California, she's uh leans a touch to the left. It doesn't really surprise you, does it? The funny thing is, there's only actually one. Or I'm pretty sure there's only one auto manufacturer in California and it's an EV company Tesla but it's odd in the States too there's such like this if you've ever been to the United States there's a reason why it's called the United States because they're well I think it seems to be the mm. divided states at the moment but um if they ban gas cars in California what does that mean you can just buy them in Texas wrong yeah that's interesting but even Tesla was threatening to leave there a few months ago from uh, I think a lot of the COVID restrictions and apparently they pay, you know, there's so much red tape in California running a business. Speaking of Teslas, now they've got this 1100 horsepower Tesla called a Model S Plaid. What is Plaid? What does that mean? Plaid. Plaid, what? Plaid, Plaid, what? 
Now the older Tesla, the older Tesla you know, the all-wheel drive one that has a motor front, motor rear, so each axle drives. This one's got this one's a tri motor. It's got an active centre diff basically, but it still looks the same. Model. It S. looks the same car. It says it's apparently good for 1.9. Second 60 foot time. I saw a bloke actually who... 60 foot, no, no, north to 100, 60, foot. 60 miles north, an hour. 60 miles an hour, what the hell am I saying? I saw a bloke who's got, yeah. he's, he, he tests Teslas down the drag strip a lot and he's got a lot of, um, he's always got a McLaren 720S because that's kind of like the benchmark down the quarter. Well, he's, got he, a bunch of, he's got a bunch of cars, yeah. He, I saw him the other day, he ran that down the quarter and he went 899, like literally just scraped an eight. And he went 162 mile an hour or something. And he's obviously got, he's got a data logger on it. And he goes, that did 1.9 to 60. And he goes, that's how fast that Tesla's going to be. And they're claiming, Tesla, I think, Te isn't Tesla claiming it's going to do the quarter mile under nine seconds? So an eight something. Is that serious? That's ridiculous. Well, give it, given they, look, they do hook up pretty good. And if you put some drag tires on it, it would hook up even better. But, but he was making a comment. It was making a comment, Luke. Even he was saying, he goes, to run an eight, it's going to have to run 150 miles an hour over the quarter, which is bloody impressive. And he goes, yeah, that car yeah. needed 160 to do it though. Yeah. Because yeah. the Tesla will half track very quick. But generally, right, a heavier car, you need more trap speed to run the same ET. Yeah. But it's electric, right? Which means they're going to do the front half of the track quicker. They tend to fall over a bit. Because, you know, the... Um, mile an hour and ETs never really make sense on EV cars. Like, a Tesla might might be able to run, say, an 899 at 148. Whereas if it was a Honda Civic, it'd be an 899 at 189. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty um, much. But you've got to see, remember, that they've added another another motor, Jordan. That's, that's already a very heavy car. I think they weigh well over two ton, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, this is that. That's what I mean. You got a lot of weight. That's that's bloody impressive. But on top of that, the the mileage is like over eight eight hundred kilometers. Yeah, eight hundred plus eight hundred plus kilometers or something. Uh, so they've obviously added another battery and uh, sorry, another motor, and they've added a bunch more batteries. So because this car gets heavier and heavier, but at the well, same it says time, it, it says it can do two hundred miles an hour, which is three hundred about three hundred twenty k's. So not only that, it's going to run a quarter mile in 9.0 or quicker, and it's going to have a top speed of 3.20. This is just... You look at how far advanced this has come in even the last five, seven years. It's, it's crazy. Like, where's it going to be in another 10 years? Especially when they're making more of these models and they can put more money into them, as in, like, more production numbers. It's going to guarantee, you know, speed up speed up the uh, technology of it even further. Well, that, that was the... The big, the big change that was coming out was basically, I think his batteries have come out, they're saying they're about 30% more efficient. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why that's, you're that's able to run really. longer. Yeah, but how many people, I saw, I saw a lot of people complaining, they're saying Australian, the car's going to cost, as you'd expect, probably 250, 250 grand, and people yeah, but it's, are it's doing, it's doing like supercar performance. Yeah, but it's just Hi a Kia. Hypercar performance. It's just a Kia. I love people, oh, it's just a key and it's crap. It's like, oh, hang on, hang on. H how many Teslas have you driven? Oh, that's right. None. It's a Kia. What are you saying? Is that what they're saying? Oh, they're basically saying you're paying 250000 for the build quality of a Kia. Oh. And it's like, I, I guarantee you these people haven't even driven one. And I, I, I've driven a couple. The first, I, I will agree, the build, like inside, they're not like... Inside, they're not built well, well built at all. I wouldn't say, they're not, they're not like... For the you know the, the for the money the for the money I guess you get in you go oh it's but that's not what you're buying it for no I think you'd forget about that as soon as you drive it you're buying it for the tech yeah the tech in them's awesome yeah that's like saying oh, I bought a supercar the gas mileage it's not that good you know if you want some plush uh, car you know go buy a Rolls Royce Phantom hey yeah speaking of killer interiors how about that new uh, was it the Aston or the you're, you're talking about the Aston Martin, I think it's called a Victor. Yeah, it's got like a full-on fighter pilot steering wheel. You know, it just looks like a computer game. Yeah, it's a bit like Knight Rider spec. And there's a... One thing I love on new cars is the technology inside them. Like, you know, the the LCD screens, everything's adjustable. Just the, the LED lighting inside the cars, the headlights, that kind of stuff is just... It just makes things so nicely finished off. 
personally, like if you look inside something like an Aston, an Aston compared to say a Ferrari, my God, mm. like the interior of an Aston is so much nicer than something like a Ferrari. It's a differently spec'd car though, because Astons yeah. are regarded as like, what do they call them? A GT Cruiser or some sort of mm. GT class or something. They're not meant to be a sports car as such. It's hard to believe the Nissan R35 GTR has been around for 15 years now. And they're going to send it out with a bang with a 710 horsepower model. Send it. You know what's ridiculous? It's 15 years on, Giordo, and it still slays most cars on the market. I know, it just shows it just shows how far advanced this car was when it came out. And amazingly, if you look at the 15-year transformation of this car, visually mm. it hasn't changed that much. All they've done is made the front... The front end looks a bit more aggre mm. it looks more aggressive and yeah. har harder lines than that. But the shape of the car is essentially the, the same. The, yeah. I don't think the rear the rear has changed even less. It's not like it's had an update where they've kind of done a... Even like not when you really. think about an NSX, I know they had like they had to remove the pop-up lights and stuff. But if you look mm. at a lot of cars that were out for a while, when you look at the start and end, they have changed a bit, even though the shape's the same. They That's haven't a very really long, had... <laughs> That's a very long production run, isn't it? Oh, massively, yeah. I guess the, um, the R&D... You know, the cost to create that car would have been pretty high. Is there an R36 model coming out? Because I'm completely out of the loop when it comes to GDR I haven't stuff. been following that at all, actually. It's, no. um, it's got to be more relevant than the ridiculous RX, RX9 concept drawings you see every five minutes on the internet, which is just never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking up R35s, obviously I ended up on car sales and I found this model. Never been out in the rain, not been driven on any racetrack, and hasn't been revved over 5,000 RPM, guaranteed. Bullshit. So this car, he's going to guarantee, has never been past 5,000 RPM. I can take that to the bank. Hey, you know, Jordo, you might be you might be laughing at that. When I bought my Subaru, the previous owner uh, had a little bit of OCD about that, and he told me it had never been on. He'd, I think he'd owned the car nine or ten years, and had never been on a wet road. There are some there are some fussy owners out there. I remember when I bought, I test drove a Honda VTIR. I think in the states they know as a GSR. This car was immaculate. I ended up buying it. I take it for a test drive, and the road was kind of a little bit damp. I'm driving along, and there was this kind of this a little bit of dirt or mud on the road, and I wasn't paying attention, as in like a little bit of mud on the road, whatever. Like, what are you doing, mate? I'm driving the car. You shouldn't be touching the steering wheel. Are you serious? You cannot be serious! Another car and a Toyota Supra slash BMW competitor is the new Nissan's been revealed. The Nissan 400Z. Or no, Z, that as isn't say. revealed. That's, that's a prototype. A oh, prototype, it's not, is it? It's not the car they're going to sell. To be honest, a lot of people were bagging. I don't mind the look of it. I reckon it looks nice. Yeah, I don't mind it. They're saying it's going to be, I think... Uh, the 350, 350, 370 shape, I don't know, in, in my books, looks so dated. No, I never liked that car, actually. Yeah. But this one, I think, looks a lot nicer. But the, yeah, it's um, just a lot sharper. It, isn't this, isn't this rumoured to be a... It is meant to be a like a baby Godzilla, like a twin-turbo V6? Well, they've already got the twin-turbo 3-litre. So and it's going to have a... It's going to have the a manual Infinity, gearbox. Infinity engine, whatever. The, oh, yeah, which is a fa essentially... Isn't that also related to a Kia Stinger engine? Don't they I share some remember. common architecture or something with these brands? Yeah, but one, um, th one of those engines will end up in the... What's the key? I think it's the 3.3. But wasn't one the of those... 400... Was, wasn't it... Um, aren't they saying that will be available in a manual? A lot of these cars aren't available in a manual anymore. Yeah, which is interesting because apparently the sales of the 370s in manuals is like less than 5%. I don't mind the, I don't mind the 350s, but um, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's good to see... Uh, like, it's amazing how people whinge and sook about these new models. I think, just be thankful they're still being made. Yeah, I know. You could, you could, think, you know you could have brands like good old Mitsubishi who Mitsubishi. sell nothing you'd want to buy. Imagine if, imagine if these car manufacturers were going down that route. There'd be nothing to buy at all from anyone. Mm. People are already doing renderings of this 400 version. You know, they're doing the typical Nismo rendering, the Stance rendering. Some of them look pretty good. Some of them are just horrible, as in, like, in any Stance car to me is just... I'm sorry, just kill it with fire. Speaking of uh, new cars, Jordan, this Toyota Yaris, it's called a G GR. A GR4. Yeah, the, you know, there's been obviously uh, media on it in the past, but Toyota released their pricing because a lot of people said, hey, it's going to be like Golf R pricing. 
You can't you can't. Well, I was saying that. thirty to fifty grand, but there's no there's no way it was ever going to be in the thirty grand range. Surely. No, I saw a few people saying it should be high twenties. Like, yeah, good luck with that. Anyway, yeah, but probably fifty plus is too much, right? It's a two dollar little car. Tiny car. You got to think this is the size. A Yaris is the size of like. If you know what a Renault Clio, a VW Polo, like it's in the baby size cars generally. But so it, Toyota came out and said the first thousand sales, they'll sell them for 40 instead of 50. Yeah. And then they'll reassess the pricing. I, I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to sell their thousand and, and it'll just stay at 40. It all depends on how many they sell. Do you know what I mean? It went on sale, was it three days ago, pre-orders. Mm. Now, obviously you're pre-ordering the car. So you, let alone you can't drive one. There's not even one to go look at. No. So, you, you know, obviously, it's a bit of a gamble, but they sold 560 in the first day, and I think they were heavily in New South Wales, from memory. They sold, apparently, 300 in the first three hours, too. Yeah, 88. No, they sold 88. I heard it, 88 in 11 minutes, and the website crashed. Oh, really? But I don't mind the look of this, Jordan. I'm thinking maybe that you we should get one as a full boost project car. Set of TE37s. I even checked Vic Rhodes for some of the custom plates. To my dismay, GR747 is already taken. That's got to be someone's initials. There's no way. A 747 plates are pretty popular in, in, in Melbourne, especially in the uh, northern suburbs region. But, yeah, um, I don't really think you see too many 747s on a, uh, a little Toyota Yaris. Can you imagine paying 40 grand for a Toyota Yaris? <laughs> Can you imagine if we got a Toyota Yaris? Do you reckon we'd cop more shit than when we bought Renaults? Is that possible? <laughs> While I was thinking about this, I thought maybe we could buy a Toyota Yaris and an RX-8 and do some head-to-head matchups. <laughs> How was that even a fair battle? Huh? Oh, because the RX-8 would have 30 grand. What am I talking about? The RX-8 is going to cost you five grand max, so it'd have 35k in mods. Is that, is that, is that how, how it's going to work out or what? Oh my God, Jordy. And the Yaris just sits there being standard? <laughs> What is going on up there? I thought they were leaving. Now, I think when it when the rumours first came out, this thing was going to have like 180 kilowatts. Now, for those remember, who don't it's know, a, it's a three cylinder. Why would you buy? Why would you be paying forty thousand dollars for a Toyota Yaris? Well, it's actually all wheel drive. It weighs twelve hundred and eighty kilos. That is so light these days. For an all, that's actually very similar weight to your Lancer GSR. Pretty it's unheard about, of to get it's an, only about forty well, kilos heavier. Well, to get a normal drive car under thirteen hundred kilos, that is unheard of now. So it's got a one point six liter, three cylinder turbo engine making two hundred kilowatts. It's got um, split drive mode, so you, I think you can have it's similar to my car. You could you could have say seventy percent rear wheel drive, or you could have like sixty percent going to the front wheels, depending on the mode you got it in. I, don't, I mean, this is a bit, bit broad, but about the only part it's got in common with the, uh, you know, some nugget Yaris is the dashboard. That's about how far removed it is. But they've developed that car because obviously I'm assuming they want to go group in rallying with it. Yeah, there's got to be an ulterior motive in it. And there's also a new from Toyota. Toyota aren't doing too bad, lad. They've got the Supra and now this car. They're also going to release a new 86. Now, aren't they going to release some sort of, um, I don't know if that's rumoured, aren't they also talking about doing a Corolla? That's going to yeah. be like... A competitor to, I'm guessing, the hot hatch, the... Because the Corolla's what's obviously... It gonna, what's it going to be? A bigger version of the Yaris, like a Polo is to the Golf. Yeah, but it's probably... They're all front drives. I don't know. But but I, I don't know how far on that is. But all of a sudden, it's like Toyota's getting their uh, half-decent cars coming out now, which is good to say. You know, good to see. What do you guys reckon? Do you reckon we should buy... I think we need a couple of new project cars, but I'm thinking maybe we'll get something late model. I was going to buy a new Commodore, but... Uh, yeah, I think the ship sailed on those. Have you seen the price? Seriously, people are trying to sell VF Commodores for. Why don't you buy? This is going to, internet hate mail. Why don't you buy a ZB Commodore, the V6 all-wheel drive one, and just throw some snails on it? Ha! <laughs> yeah, because that would just be straightforward, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, it'd be straight Bolton exactly. The other day, I got offered a pretty mint BF. There's no way you are going to drive around in one of those things. I keep thinking about it, and I think after about a week... Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? I'd like to buy, yeah, like I was saying last time on car sales, the COVID tax, everything is out of control. Everything, the like, what? maybe I'll look at one of these cars, you're just like, there's no way I'm paying that. Oh, you're talking about older cars? Yeah. 
That's, yeah. It's almost at the point. It's almost at the point. You might as well just go and buy it, like one of these. Maybe it's the 400Z or the Super or maybe a new 86. A Super is like near 100 grand, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. No, but what I mean is the price that people are charging. Have you seen the prices of some of these VL turbos going for lately? <laughs> I saw one of the auctions. It's currently, wasn't it on 71 grand and it hadn't finished or something? It's BT1, bro. In absinthe, is it absinthe yellow? Look, speaking of BT1s. Hey, what do you got there? This is, uh, we are now selling genuine RB30 tops and these aren't, no, no twin cams. The original gangster single cam, that's what people love. This is not actually the one we're selling. This was like a, a test print. So it's slightly different, but it's very close to this end result. So we've got red ones, yellow ones. We've also got the old uh, classic Dirty 30, which is a bit more simplified. So there is some RB merchandise. So what you're saying, just like new cars, the, the one you're wearing is nothing like the one you're selling. <laughs> No, it actually, it's same, it actually it's same, is same, 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 different. same, same, different, yeah. Yeah. Now, Luke, did you see this? I actually didn't think this would happen, but right-hand drive Corvettes are actually getting closer, and it's not just rumors. Here's the deal. Japan's going to be the first right-hand drive country to receive the new mid-engine Chevrolet. GM has announced the base Corvette 2LT will start in the Japanese market from approximately Australian 152,000. So what's it going to end up here? The highest spec 3LT is priced at roughly 180. So what are we getting the uh, the 5.3 cast iron block or are we getting the uh, LS9? Everyone will say they're expensive. I guarantee you as soon as these are released, if our drag racing ever actually resumes, they'll be their first meet. Oh, they'll be sold out. Look, yeah, HSV, I'll, I'll HSV used to release 100 gram plus GDSs and you'd see them a week mm. later on the road. Yeah, but they're four doors, Jordo. Yeah, I know. I know. They're not practical the, at all. The problem, with these car, the problem with these cars, it's they're, a weekend it's car. A, it's like a genuine sports car. It's not practical. But then again, I mean, a lot of people have bought Mustangs, but they're, they're a lot cheaper, so... Oh, I don't care. I, these Corvettes will be awesome. What was that new, new car I think you were telling me about? I haven't seen it, have I? It's on the freaking thing. You know the thing. 